War is a dirty business. Now this section as well as Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, it brings up a very uh, frankly awkward topic and it needs to be discussed because there's at least like 20 or 30 verses in this section. And I'm going to summarize some aspects here and we're going to return to this topic later on because there are other sections of the Quran uh, that have this as well. This uh, chapter of Baqarah, it raises for the very first time the reality of physical warfare and of course of qital and of jihad and it lays out some very very explicit rules. Now again this is a long drawn out topic but it does need to be addressed because it's right here in the Quran and Allah says in the Quran Surah Al-Baqarah verse 216, wa huwa kurhul lakum. Fighting is ordained for you even though you don't like it. Nobody likes to go to war. War is a dirty business. War is not something you want to do. وَهُوَ كُرْهُ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا But it's possible that you dislike something. وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ And it is for your best interests. And it's possible that you like something and it is not good for you. And Allah knows and you do not know. Once again, we come across a very, very Quranic truth that is embodied in Surah Al-Baqarah. The concept of jihad, yes indeed there is no denying that in the Quran there is something, there's a notion of a just war theory, that sometimes you have to go to war, sometimes you have to fight to defend, there are reasons that you go to battle. Pacifism sounds really nice when you're an undergraduate at some university, it's really nice to write papers about pacifism and we should not be fighting, that's great, but the world cannot and does not run by on pacifism. Nations go to war all the time, but the difference is that generally speaking, most nations go to war because of worldly issues, because of money, because of oil, because of natural resources. In Islam.